Hello everyone and welcome to episode 52 of the TW 2020 UJPW series here on the channels. It is the Royal Road Tournament for the Ricky Dozer Memorial Cup and also more importantly, winner gets a future UJPW Grand Unified Everyday Title matchup at the October Giants series. Major, major tournament as always. Usually it is a open weight tournament, but because the best Super Junior happens now as far as it's been a couple of years now since we've had the best super juniors kind of prelude this i think we're going to change up the schedule next year so that way it gives those guys a little bit of a rest period before uh the tournament and i think that's just a because right now it's kind of like a disadvantage you know for those guys they work the entire month before while obviously everybody else gets basically the whole month off besides the uh, final so it just kind of doesn't make sense from a scheduling perspective i think we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have the best super juniors follow the J Cup, and then we'll have the Summer Action Series, then it will lead into the Royal Road Tournament. I think that just makes sense more from a scheduling perspective. Uh, but the tournament has been set. 16 of the very best of UJPW battling it out, and uh, they will battle it out throughout the next couple of nights, obviously. Uh, the first night will feature all of the tournament matches, which will be as followed. Akira Tawe versus Kenta Kobashi, Mitsu Aramasa versus Toshiyaki, Toshiyaki Kawada, Dan Crawford and Johnny Ace, Kinsuke Sasaki and Steven Regal, Norman Smiley versus Hiroshi Hase, Jun Akiyama versus Stan Hansen, Terry Funk versus Johnny Smith in his first ever Royal, Royal Road Tournament, and then Shin Yashimoto taking on Steve Williams, the former Unified Grand Heavyweight Champion, the winner of uh, last year's Royal Road winner. I would just, you know, this is a pretty fun-ass block here, obviously, of matches. This round of 16, you have, obviously, the future, potentially, as far as, you know, depending on what happens. The Masawa and Kobashi are taking on Tawa and Kawada. They are the number one contenders. But this is a fun-ass match to kind of see what happens for these four men, as far as they're facing off against each other. You know, so the teammates battling it out against the opponents, and it just... It's fun. It's a fun little round of 16. Same thing for Kensuke Sasaki and Hiroshi Ase against Steven Regal and Norman Smiley. That's going to be the all-Asia tag team title matchup that's happening at the October Giant Series as well. As, as far as for Kensuke and Hase, you know, as far as they've had a, a pretty fun run as of late. They just have been coming up short on a lot of the tag team title, the unified, you know, grand tag team. Well, I guess not grand, just unified uh, world tag team title matchups. And so, yeah, so that should be, you know, a fun little story as well. And then for Jun Akiyama and Stan Hansen, that's a great opportunity for Jun Akiyama taking on somebody like Stan Hansen, a guy who just had a main event title matchup, even though he was screwed out of that matchup, thanks to interference. So that a nice little redemption opportunity there for Stan Hansen as well. And, uh, yeah, Shin Yashimoto, Steve Williams, no Masahiro Chono in this round of 16, as he is opting to train with... Kaiji Muto and preparing for his title matchup, but also he will be uh, competing on night two in a tag match with Kaiji Muto as they're going to take on Ultimate Dragon Dragon and Super Astros. So that's a fun little heavyweight versus junior tag team matchup there. As well as that title matchup is taking place on night three for the All Asia Heavyweight title, as far as, uh, you know, Jushin, or I'm about to say Jushin like a Jesus Christ, Ultimate Dragon versus Kaiji Muto. As, uh, you know, as far as that's what, uh, that's, what Ultimo Dragon wanted after uh, winning the best of juniors, that was what his big plan was to be the All Age Heavyweight Champion, then to go on to uh, take on the Great Sasuke at the October Giant Series for the Junior Heavyweight title so he could be the double champion. Would be pretty impressive if that is the case, but obviously, I mean, Kaiji Muto, this has been his year. He's been fantastic as of late, and uh, man, he's going to be a problem. Problem for sure. And uh, that's that's going to be a fun match. Fun match to see. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's hop right in to night one here. As I really don't know what I want for nights two and three. I know I want that tag match for night two. But other than that, we'll, we'll just kind of see what happens. We also have uh, the press conference where Baba, you know, as far as announces Vader as the special enforcer for this all-Asia heavyweight title matchup that's happening. Uh, yeah, it, it's unfortunate that we're not going to see like a Demolinko or Hayabusa in this tournament because yeah, they definitely have deserved it but it just kind of again is what it is or even Ayabusa. but yeah that's uh stuff is crazy you know muda 
and uh, Ultimo Drac, as far as the 99 there, when he was the great Muda. And even then, you know, as far as it's kind of crazy to think that uh, he didn't even go on to win the whole thing as the great Muda. So it's just kind of wild to think. Let's see what Vader's doing. Oh, let's put over Yuji Nagata. That's really awesome. One of Wanting to put over Yuji Nagata is pretty base. Especially for somebody like Vader. Yes, there's the pre-show press conference. As this is where it's announced, you know, as far as Chono is, is you know, been preparing, you know, with Kaiji Muto preparing for the title match of sparring with them, if you will, and talking about, you know, the tag match that he's going to be at for, uh, as far as Kaiji Muto and Chono against Dragon and Astro. But yeah, that'll be on the pre-show, since, you know, that's kind of like the, what will air going into the show type of thing. Also, the, as far as what the format shall be, we'll start with the main event. It's obviously Masao and Kawada, and it will be a draw. First time we have a draw in the uh, Royal Road Tournament. Of course, you know, 30 minute time limit, so it's going the distance, as uh, we will have Jumbo be the agent for this. But yeah, so someone's going to get a bye in the next round. So that's going to be a huge advantage for whoever that person is. Just for the sake of uh, story, we'll just have Tawe and Kobashi next, and Tawe is going to be Kenta Kobashi in 28 minutes. Shocking win for Tawe. I guess maybe not so shocking since he's beaten him in the past. You know, he's, he beat him during the first Champion Carnival, and I want to say he beat him. Was it the 95 Champion Carnival, or was it the 96? It wasn't the 95, so it must have been the 96. It might have even been the 97, now I'm thinking about it. Oh no, it was the Summer Action Series show in, in 95 that they beat him in. Could have swore they had, yes, it was earlier this year, 97, so that's been, uh, you know, they've had some pretty big matches back and forth. You know, had the Unified Grand Everweight title matchup back in January of uh, 96, and they've had you know, a couple of big-time matches, but usually it seems like Talway's gotten the best of them. It's kind of shocking. Sounds like a lot of people obviously would see that coming, but yeah, that's a great win for Talway. Being a former winner, too, in the first round, massive. Massive indeed. We'll add Hashimoto and Williams here, and Shinya Hashimoto's going to get the win right before the 30-minute mark, so another former winner goes down on the first round. Oh, I don't know why Doc was set as the agent there. Well, that would be Saito, I guess. So Hashimoto's going to struggle with the stamina of, of you know, as far as working that long of a match, but I think it still should be a fun contest there. We'll go Kinsuke and Regal next. Steven Regal's going to be Kinsuke Sasaki in 20 minutes, then Norman and Hase, which, actually, we'll probably bump that up, because that's probably going to be the better matchup of the two, as Hiroshi Hase is going to beat Norman Smiley. They've had one match. It was the Champion Carnival last year, which Hase won that match as well. Pretty fascinating. Oh, uh, but also, we didn't even really get to talk about this. This is the first time that Hashimoto and, uh, oh, clicked the wrong match. Uh, Hashimoto, Steven Williams, that's the first time they've ever had, like, any interaction, which is kind of crazy that it's taken this long to even been in, like, any type of matches. So a first time meeting literally ever in a singles contest is pretty remarkable. You, you rarely get to see that in this save, which is kind of shocking. Uh, yeah, as far as, I don't remember what's the Steel the Show matchup. I don't think it's Terry Funk and Johnny Smith, so I'll add that next. Terry Funk's advancing to the next night, or the next, you know, as far as advancing in the tournament. Drew Nakayama versus Stan Hansen. What an upset for Drew Nakayama here. Obviously, Stan Hansen's still dealing with that injury, so I think it's a believable upset. Uh, Stan's beating him every time, so it would be a major win, too, for Drew Nakayama as well. Yeah, I had a feeling that might happen. Uh, we'll keep him strong, out of just respect for Stan Hansen, because he is the man. All right. <laughs> Yeah, that respect going right out the window. You're just losing straight up. It is what it is. So Dan Crawford and Johnny Ace, uh, two guys I believe are making their debuts in the Champion Carnival, or in the Champion Carnival, in the uh, Royal Road Tournament. Dan Crawford going to get the win over Johnny Ace, and they steal the show matchup in 10 minutes. Pretty solid opener, though. And yeah, I think this show has the potential to be just as good as the previous uh, year's show. It's going to be tough, though, because 299s in the main and co-main was... Pretty nuts. So we'll have the Tokyo Dome be the venue for this show for night one. Here we go. As of, wow, that press conference did really well. Well, that rules. Rarely these angles go well, so that's nice to see. Hell yeah. It's an 80 for the opener. Yeah, Dan Crawford with a 90. That's pretty remarkable. Tiger Driver from Dan Crawford in 943. So he goes to the next round. Joe Akiyama. 
beating Stan Hansen. He does outperform him. It's crazy that was only at 80, but uh, I guess it is what it is with Hansen's injury. He got a big toll, but the Blue Thunder Bomb for Junak Yama, 21-15. Just a massive win there for Junak Yama, though, at 81. For Terry Funk and Johnny Smith, if they don't click. Yeah, that's tough. Johnny Smith outperformed him. Uh, Terry Funk gets the win with the pile driver, though, at 23-33. It's a 90 for Kensuke Sasaki and Steven Regal. It's a great performance from both guys. Mainly Regal, obviously, as he gets the win with that Regal plex. But I just, I love Kensuke. So any time you could have, especially him and Regal, that, I don't think that happened in WCW. I was thinking it might have. Because they kind of, I don't think they, uh, I think they missed each other as far as being in WCW at the same time. But I could have swore they had a match. Oh, oh well, oh well. That is a 95, though, for Norman Spinelli and Roshiase. Because Roshiase hitting the one with the Northern Lights suplex. Norman did outperform him, which is pretty awesome. Uh, shout out Norman with a 94. But Roshiase getting on at 28-20 does rule, though. And it's a pretty awesome matchup. It's Hashimoto and Steve Williams. Hashimoto getting the win in 28-46 with a jumping spike DDT. Hell of a win there for Shinya Hashimoto, even with the visibly, you know, fatigued setting in late in the contest. And you could have that be a part of the story, though. And he still has the strength and energy to pick him up for that jumping spike DDT and picks up the win and beats Doc. Just like that. Crazy. Crazy thing. Taoway and Kobashi's a 99 as Taoway with a dynamic bomb. Shout out Kendo Kobashi losing to it when he had a 98th in ring performance. That is nuts. But the dynamic bomb for Kiro Taoway advancing in the next round. And then our first draw. And of course, it has to be between Mitsu Awasawa and Toshi Kawada having a first draw in this tournament. But yeah. Felt like this was the right time. They've had a couple of draws, obviously. It's Masao and Kawada. I don't think we need to sell this match to anybody <laughs> why it's the main. And it does deliver. It, it was nice to see that that main and co-main did exactly what we needed it to do. So that's awesome to see. Uh, so yeah, I kind of wanted to see what the game, as far as because I set the tournament up in the game. and not really like through like a website or anything. Like I didn't use like challenge or anything. So I really didn't want to like, pre-book whatever was going to happen, because I'm really not sure how they're going to do it, especially with the buy now, as far as, I don't know if it's going to be Tawei, Hashimoto, Hase, Regal, Terry Funk, Junaki, Amar, Dan Crawford, I'm not sure who gets the buy, because uh, as far as you would imagine, it honestly would be Tawei if, if it's the way it's set up in the game, but I'm not sure, so we'll figure that out, but yeah, on to night two, we go. Alrighty, so night two, uh, we have a you know, as far as some exclusive footage after the show of night one that's going to be aired as far as a, a little prelude to the show, uh, much like how we had the press conference kind of prelude night one, as far as it is after the draw, you have in the back, you have Baba having to get in between Kobashi Masao and Tao and Kawada as far as they are, you know, about to come to blows back there. And they just go, you know what, let, let's not wait until the October Giants series. You know, Tawei, you got the bye, so you don't even have a match scheduled for night two. Why don't we have the main event of night two, Holy Demon Army, Super Generation Army for the tag team titles, and they make it official right then and there. So that is our main event for this show, which, where's it at? There it is. I was wondering why I couldn't find it. But yes, Kitako Bashi, Mitsuha Masawa are the new Unified World Tag Team Champions. So poor Tawei, you know, as far as he's still in the tournament, but, uh, you know, he loses out on his tag team titles. Kawada, you know, as far as gets the draw the first night, second night, ends up losing his tag team titles. But what a night, though, for Masawa and Kobashi, as far as Kobashi getting to have some revenge as well as beating Tawei, avenging his loss from night one, and as well as picking up a huge victory. So, yeah, as far as Masao and Kobashi, this is their first run as far as Unified World Tag Team Champions. I believe they were all Japan Tag Champs, though, at one point in time. I could have swore they were. I know uh, Masao and Kanemoto were. I could have swore they were as well. See if I can just kind of... So, there's Taoei and Jumbo. I guess not. Wow. Oh kind of wild to be honest looking at, the, at this list because yeah it's like they did it wasn't even uh koji kanemoto in, in masawa huh what did they have the iwgp tag team titles is what i'm is that what i'm thinking no not it either oh well 
Yeah, we made it active. Yeah, oh, it was Masao and Kanemoto with you. Yeah, they were the last champs. I don't know why I was thinking. Jesus. As, uh, that's embarrassing. But, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, as far as for Masao and Kobashi, I don't even think they were all Asia Tag Team Champions either. Yeah, it looks like they were not. So, yeah, the first reign for them as champs. Pretty awesome. I think it's well-deserved. And, obviously, this match is going to kick ass. Yeah, let's make sure this is the goddamn pre-show. I completely forgot about that. There we go. All right, so the tournament matches. So, obviously, now you see that Taue gets the bye. So, the three tournament matches, Dan Crawford, Stephen Regal, Hiroshi Ase, Jun Akiyama, and Terry Funk, and Shin Yashimoto will have this be the co-main. I think that's the right call. Hashimoto's going to be Terry Funk. He's going on to the next round. So, then we'll have Crawford and Regal go here. Stephen Regal, so it'll be Dan Crawford. It's a great win for Regal, first of all. This is going to be a great match. Uh, Crawford beat him during the Champion Carnival. So, a nice little win back for him. Which is their second singles matchup against each other. Hase and Junakiyama. Of course, will be the last tournament matchup on the card, which Hase is going to beat Junakiyama. So, that's a big-time uh, big time event coming up here, as far as for Night 3. So, you have, obviously, the all Age Everweight title matchup. As well as then, you'll have either... Probably will be Tauwei... And Regal, and then it'll be Hase and Hashimoto if I had to guess. Just based off of how this is laid out. So yeah, so that's exciting as far as from that perspective. So the uh, non-tournament matches. So we have this Chono Mudo Ultima Dragon Super Astro matchup that we'll add. As uh, Chono is going to beat Astro there in 26 minutes. So it's going to give them a lot of time. Then the undercard stuff. Uh, we got Bravin against with Scott Norton and Big Titan against uh, Tenkoji and Yuji Nagata. We also have the Blonde Bombers against uh, Psychosis and Vampiro. We'll add that match first. As Candido going to be beating Psychosis there. That's a nice win for them. Vader and Takayama, I just want them to beat the piss out of each other for about 10 minutes is all I'm asking for. Vader's going to win. This is going to to showcase the Enforcer and how much of a bad motherfucker he is. And they'll open up the show, the six-man tag, as Tenkoji's gonna, Tenkoji with Yuji Nagata are going to beat uh, Brad Brown against Scott Norton. And I figured we'll try Big Titan as far as a, a trio there for them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, night two. Pretty uh, self-explanatory. I believe we'll be running the Tokyo Dome yet again. Seems to be a fun idea. We might, uh... Actually, yeah, let's run somewhere else for night two. Let's say they only have the Osaka Drill Hall. I always forget that the venues here are obviously a lot smaller. As, uh, let's see what we will run. Yes, we'll go with Osaka Joel, I guess, because I think that's probably the second biggest venue that we can even run. That's fine. That, that's fine. No big deal. Osaka Joel, it is. So here we go, night two. 70 for this angle. I'm loving that the angles are going so well. Warms my heart. And it's a 74 for the opener, though. That's not bad at all. Big Titan was the best guy in the match. So that rolls. Uh, Brad Renegans losing the Anaconda Vice. Yeah, that makes sense, since, you know, Brad Renegans was the worst guy in the match. And Denzon was uh, tied for the best for his team. Yeah, that actually went really well. But yeah, Big Titan and, and Scott Norton, uh, with also Brad Renegans, too. I, I really kind of want to go in that direction as far as Scott Norton and Big Titan as a, as a team, kind of going forward. I think that would rule as a team. As a, kind of like a fire and ice as far as when uh, Scott Orton and Ice Train teamed. Kind of in that same vein. But Vader, with the Vader bomb in 10 minutes, kills him, squashes him, murders him, if you will. But uh, yeah, 82 there for Vader, 48 for Takayama, 82 for Jericho and Candido against Psychosis and Vampiro. The blonde bombshell for him. Uh, Chris Candido there over Psychosis, which is a solid little junior tag match, even though Vampiro tactically is bigger. In, uh, any of the juniors. Well, Jesus Christ, I, I couldn't... I don't know why I, I didn't think this match would be even better than what it assumed to be, because obviously two teams with excellent chemistry. The Ultimo Dragon and Gaiji Mudo get 100. That ruled. Yeah, Deathlock STF from Chono over Astro. Right decision. Got the crowd hotter. Good luck following that. Asase beating Junakiyama with a Northern Light Suplex in 26 minutes. A 99 for Crawford and Steve Eagle. What a match that is as a 99 for, 
before. The matchup 93s for both guys. Phenomenal stuff. Regal going on to the semifinals. Then Terry Funk and Shinya Shimoto. It's Hashimoto with a sp jumping spike DDT in 20 minutes. It's crazy. Even with the stamina issues, he's still killing it out there. Just ruling his Shinya Hashimoto there. And a 99 for the main event. I was hoping this would be the 100. But Taue fucked us. But that's okay. That's still a hell of a match. As uh, Kobashi with the orange crush over Taue. New Unified World Tag Team Champions. As that's his second round, of course, for Masawa. But with different partners, obviously. But the Super Generation Army, the Tag Team Champions of the World. Love it. Love the show. Uh, this Royal Road shows. I mean, every week, you know, from nights one, two, to three, into the finals. We always try to have great shows. But this is going to be an all-timer, for sure. As on to night three, we go. Alrighty, night three is, of course, we'll see what the finals will look like, but also, major main event, Ultimo Dragon, Gaiji Mudo, my god, what a match. And uh, that is going to be pretty, pretty awesome. I do say so myself. So we will add that match first. Special Enforcer, Vader at ringside. So Kaiji Mudo gets him in the corner. Backhand spring elbow. Ultimo Dragon gets out of the way, though. But, as far as, uh, you know, Kaiji Muto, after the backhand spring misses, bounce back, looking for a, uh, a drop kick, you know, as far as a basement drop kick to take out his, his legs. Ultimo Dragon, again, moves out of the way. Referee's in the way, though. He goes, you know, drops down, rolls out to the floor. And uh, Vader is uh, it's just as far as looking down on him, making sure you know, no one's coming out. Takes, you know, a couple of glances around. Picks the ref up, throws him into the guardrail, gets into the ring, and it's like, oh shit, what is he going to do? This big fucker is in there with really no one out here to stop him. Takes out Ultimo Dragon. And him and Kaiji Muto put the boots to Ultimo Dragon. Vader Bomb into the awesome, or I'm about to say the awesome bomb. Vader Bomb into the Moonsault. Kaiji Muto will win. Thanks to, as far as, yeah, we gotta make Vader at ringside, and then also picking up, you know, he does all that while, you know, Mudo's going for the moonsault, he picks the ref back up, throws him in the ring, and literally grabs his hand and does the count, and, uh, yeah, so how about that, as, uh, we'll go with, I was thinking a screwy ref finish, maybe as a, well, uh, we'll just call it just an interference, the turn. The turn, the turn, the turn. And as far as... Bob, a boy. I mean, that plan massively backfires. Massively, massively backfires. As uh, we'll just go ahead and talk about, you know, post-show angle. As far as Kaiju Mudo's there. Vader is there, obviously, still. But out comes Chono. And as far as the celebration starts, and, you know, as far as you, you got fans pelting shit into the ring, hopefully. And so it's Kaiju Muto and Chono and, and Vader. As Chono then gives the microphone to Kaiju Muto. You know, as far as any, you know, as far as they swap belts, you know, type of thing, as far as, you know, as far as, you know, Chono brought out the heavyweight belt, too. So, you know, as far as Kaiju Muto with both belts. And uh, as far as... With with Vader, you know, in there with Kaiji Muto and Chono, I was like, oh my god, like just the the mass size of Vader in there with Kaiji Muto. You tell something something big's happening, something big's going up. Because first of all, where's Hashimoto? There's so many questions, so many things going on. As uh, Kaiji Muto just laughing into the microphone, and it's like I don't think anyone saw that coming. He's just kind of laughing and, and just being like, you know, for. The past two years we've been in this company. That you, in United Japan Pro Wrestling, has always been funny to me. For two years, what opportunities have the New Japan guys gotten? I'm the only one who's gotten a heavyweight title match in two years. And y'all see what I did with it. Look at a guy like Big Van Vader. Multiple time IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Does he get the same opportunities? No, he has to go back home 
to America to even get those opportunities. And now look at him, a WCW heavyweight champion, a United States champion. That, that was in the save. You know, obviously, in real life, he wasn't. But just going through the list of accolades that Vader's done, and now that he's back, what's the first thing Baba does? Puts him as a special enforcer. Doesn't give him a title match. Doesn't give him an opportunity to make the most out of his ability and his size. So, I came to him. To a proposal. Hey, you know, as far as you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Here you go. And Mudo has Chono give the belt to Big Van Vader, the all Asia Heavyweight title, says, there's your payment. This is a new era. For UJPW. The New Japan talent. This is a message to all of you. Join us if you want. And out comes. Mike Awesome. Right after that. And it's like wait a minute. You know, Mike Awesome's not a New Japan guy. But you know we've seen him team with Vader. And uh, you know Kajimoto just goes. Oh here we go. Here's an all Japan guy. And Mike Awesome. I can see. Why you want to be here. You know what? I can understand why you'd want to join us, even. So how about, you know, even the All Japan guys? Listen loud and clear. Mike Awesome has the ability to be a top guy. Main event level talent, and what's he been doing for the past five years? Stuck with a shitty, shitty tag partner (laughs) in Big Titan. And now that he's finally... Gotten rid of that dead weight. He's wanting to be a top guy. Think about the team of Big Van Vader and Mike Awesome. Kind of just saying, like, these guys are going to be titans of the division. Real titans of the division. Yeah, you know, it's got Kaiji Muto with now, you know, just the unified Grand Heavyweight title. Vader, you know, is hyping up about the, you know, being the all age Heavyweight Champion thanks to this payment. I mean, he just looks at the four of them. He goes, you know, this is not only a new era. There's a new world order in Japanese pro wrestling, and it's us. It's these four men here standing in this ring. And if you want to join us, we're not going anywhere. Because if you're not with us, you're against us. Then out comes, after that line of the big, you know, celebration, out comes Shinya Hashimoto's like, hey, hey, wait, wait a minute, this is not what, why I wanted, this is not what we agreed upon in the back, you know, why you know, no one's told me about this, what the fuck's going on, and you know, Kashimoto just kind of like, you know, you picked your line in the sand when you went, decided to join the Royal Road Tournament. And with that decision, me and Chono heard that loud and clear. You're not with us, but you're against us. And four on one beatdown on poor Masahiro Chono. Or on poor Masahiro Chono. On poor Shinya Hashimoto. So we'll have a late... Maybe not cameos. I guess I was hoping there was a... I thought there was a late appearance, but I think that's just matches. So yes, Shinya Hashimoto. Be selling. As we'll have Mike Awesome. He can just be not rated. This is a, a long ass angle. It's like eight minutes. Da, da, da. A new world is here to set the record straight. Yeah, for New Japan Pro Wrestling. So that big angle. The New World Order, obviously. You know, I just figured that was a fun name to call this group since, obviously, you know, Bischoff got the idea from UWFI versus New Japan in 95. And it's just like, you know what? Let's have something like that in WCW. And, of course, they called it New World Order. So in this, you know, as far as revisionist history, as far as uh, this, you know, alt timeline, if you will, now, because, you know, we started in 92 and now we're in 97. If the New World Order was a thing that started in New Japan, well, I guess, in this case, UJPW. And I think it's a, a legitimate gripe, too, for the New Japan talent. And, you know, Kaiji Muto in that promo is just kind of like, you know, it's, it's funny that Baba's in in charge and in control here. Where's Anoki? 
where is he at? You know, as far as he was the guy that was our boss. We, we don't have anybody that's our boss. We're supposed to be united, but yet you're seeing all the all Japan town. He even runs through the Champion Carnival winners, who's been New Japan talent. You know, as far as the... Uh, and he talks about the All-Asia Everweight title. He's like, yeah, but Hashimoto finally did it. And what happened? You know, as far as they quickly got the belt off of him type of thing. And to think that in two years, uh, no New Japan talent ever had a heavyweight title matchup until Kaishimuto did. Just makes sense. You know, as far as from a story perspective, for them to really go, we got a chance to change the course of the company. And they want to do it as the New World Order. So that should be fun. Uh, and, you know, obviously we see the depth of, uh, not the depth, but the death of the Three Musketeers, which is crazy, you know, as far as seeing that kind of crumble. But now, you know, as far as with this New World Order, that's a strong four, two to start off with. As far as, you know, with Kajimuto, Masio, Chono, Vader, and, and Mike Awesome, it's a solid four because they both team well together. We could see how Chono can team with Vader and, and Mike Awesome. And as far as, and that's why, you know, Vader came back with the black mask to kind of, as far as they're going to, you know, start ro rocking the, the all black. And they, they really are going to have like the NWO shirt, the NWO logo. It, it, it's going to be that for for that gimmick. And uh, it's exciting to, to see where that goes because I think this should be a pretty fun story. Uh, that's for sure. But now, for the rest of this show, now that took about eight minutes to explain, but uh, a lot of things happened in that main event. So we have Tawei and Regal as the, uh, we'll have that be the main. Or maybe not. Well, we might have Hashimoto be the main instead in Hiroshi Ase, but Tawei's going to beat Regal. Tawei punches the ticket to the finals. What a win for Kira Tawei there. And Hiroshi Ase, uh, Roshi Hase and Shinya Hashimoto's Hashimoto is going to beat him. So I think that's a good call to have this be the like the co-main instead, because now that will explain why Kaijimuto, and, and, you know, as far as all the uh, the angle that's happening, why it takes so long for Hashimoto to get out there, because it's like, yeah, you know, he hits the showers, you know, as far as he's got to rest up, he's got to ice up, he's got a big night, you know, next week. Because you see there the finals, it's Tawei and Hashimoto. Now, what a story. We just seen Hashimoto get turned on by the Three Musketeers. He's got a chance to get some revenge on Kaijimudo, if he does in fact win over Kira Tawe. And then for Tawe, what an opportunity. As far as he gets to join Kawada, and he gets to join uh, as far as Steve Williams, as uh, or actually he joins uh, Kobashi and uh, Dr. Death Steve Williams. I don't know why I said Kawada, but yeah, he gets to join Kobashi and Dr. Death as far as being the third ever winner of the Ricky Dozer Memorial Cup. But I think that story, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, and I think it's... Uh, it, sh it should be a fun story to see how it all plays out. As uh, for Los Bravano, Di Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Wild Pegasus, a six-man tag. Oh, no, it's not Los Bravano. That's right. It, it's Shudo. I really forgot I switched it. As uh, Di Malenko's going to get the win. It's a nice matchup, though. Nice little six-man. We got Johnny Smith and Ricky Choshu against, uh, as far as you know, Johnny Smith and Norman Smiley. Big win for Kensuke Sasaki here beating Johnny Smith. But, yeah, um... Smith and Smiley don't have chemistry, so that's probably why we're going to keep this a little bit more down on the card. Uh, you know, great Sasuke and, and two Cold Scorpio against the Holy Demon Army of Maso Pucci and Yoshino Ogawa. Obviously, we're having the Junior Heavyweight title matchup on the final show, so hence why this match is taking place. Pucci is going to beat two Cold Scorpio, though, in 20 minutes. Uh, we actually might have that be... Yeah, we might put that there. Then Tenkoji with El Samurai and Yushin Liger. Against the Blonde Squad, big-ass eight-man tag here. Scandido's going to beat El Samurai. Uh, we're going to have El Samurai and Liger take on the Blonde Squad on the final show as well. Since uh, we had the Blonde Squad get a big junior tag match win. And then the opener. I just love that we get to do this again. Mike Awesome, Masato Tanaka. Last time we did this was four, uh, no, not four years ago, three years ago in uh, 94. And uh, it was like a 51. It should be a lot better here, the 50. Yeah, we did a 93 and 94, so the first time since then, should be a banger. Should be a banger. Should be an awesome way to kick off the show, uh, pun intended. So really the big thing that we gotta do is take some time off this, sh this matchup here. Yeah, I think we're gonna go 24 there. We're gonna take two minutes off this. Perfect. 
Awesome. I don't think we'll be back in the dome. No, we might be. It still will be a sellout, so yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. Major, major show. And as far as... So, there'll be... We'll add this as well, because it was going to be on the uh, the finals. It was going to like be the prelude thing. But the press conference after the show... Uh, well, yeah, we'll just save it for the uh, the you know, as far as the pre-show part of a night of the finals rather, but it's night four. But yeah, the finals. It basically is gonna be a Baba press conference where you know tonight. Oh yeah, we'll do that now instead because it makes more sense to, to do it as far as what's the reaction from Giant Baba after what he just saw. Baba press conference after the N W O D. Be perfect. I don't know why I did the little asterisk, or the, the asterisk, the little dot, dot, dot there. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And as far as uh, talking about yeah, tonight was a disgrace. Uh, what we just saw is not official for you, JPW. Big Van Vader is not the All-Age Heavyweight Champion. The championship has been vacated. And as far as Kaiji Muto, Big Van Vader, you guys should be ashamed of yourself. This should have been a major, major moment for Ultimo Dragon to main event the Tokyo Dome in a clear... Not maybe not clear in a straight up you know heavyweight title matchup and you guys screwed him and he, he's just like it's not right you guys are gonna pay I know it I know we have tried to done our best to make this a unified front but if you guys felt that way you should have came to me instead of you know as far as taking it upon yourselves to try and fix a problem and he's just kind of you know he's stunned he's shocked he's just like man I cannot believe. Which is that because he also, you feel the guilt, you know, as far as he feels that guilt of just being like, man, if I don't put Vader out there, you know, maybe Ultimo Dragon's the new All-Age Everweight Champion. So just kind of that story, I think, could definitely play into a, uh, a factor for sure. But yeah, I, you know, as far as I think, that's a fun, fun little story to be told. If I do say so myself. Oh, never mind. I don't know why I put pre-show, post-show. Yeah. Awesome. Check, check, check. All right, let's run it. I'm hoping that opener does well. Yeah, 79. Still sucks they don't have any chemistry, but it is what it is. Mike Awesome with the Awesome Bomb at 948. You love to see it. It also kind of plays, you know, as far as we get to see now what Mike Awesome can do with Vader. And uh, as far as being the turncoat, too, I think that's a fun idea. It's kind of like when Yujiro joined, well... That, maybe that's a good example, because uh, Udro didn't really do anything after he joined uh, Bullet Club. But th that idea of, like, the turncoat guy, I think it makes sense. I guess, really, because that, that was kind of more of, like, also race, too, because it was all the guys, it was all the guys in, and having somebody, you know, cross the line that was a Japanese native talent, I, that was also pretty shocking, too. So I guess that's not really in this case, but you get it, though, you know, as far as having somebody... Maybe like when uh, Claudio joined from uh, the you know f joining CCW after you know being with Ring of Honor as far as from that story in the mid two thousands. But yeah, you know it's a fun match though, fun opener. Another seventy nine, yeah, you know with the poorly you know team of uh, you know as far as the, the bad chemistry, still is a solid matchup. Kinsuke Sasaki though pinning Johnny Smith and Norman White's bomb. Joshu still the shits, but. It is what it is, and it was too short for an important match, but that's okay. Eight-man tag, though, for Ten Koji with El Samurai and Jushin Thunder Liger. They did on the Blonde Squad as the Blonde Bombshell for Candido in 2007. You love to see it. You love to see it. El, you know, as far as Liger and El Samurai killing it. Hansen should be as far as he's, he's all clear to go now, which is nice to see. But yeah, nice little eight-man tag. Nice little eight-man tag. A 90, though, for the six-man tag. Uh, Demolink, a wild pack of the Sinetti Guerrero, killing it here. Nuki Sano with a 91, and then 66 is first Sayama in Osama Nishimura. Demolink, though, with a Tex Cloverleaf over Osama Nishimura. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. 95 for the Great Sasuke and Two Cold Scorpio against Yoshinaro Ogawa. Maso Chiyosuchi pinning Two Cold Scorpio. Well, actually, submitting, rather, Two Cold Scorpio with the STF in 20 minutes. Nice little junior tag match. Of course, you know, Sasuke and Fuchi, that match is going to rule at the finals as well as Steven Regal. Losing to Akira Taue to the Dynamic Bomb in a 99. What a win for Taue. He's punched his ticket to the finals. <laughs> Boy, Shenya Hashimoto, what a 30-odd uh, minutes or so in his life. 
you go to the finals, you're like, man, this is huge. You know, as far as my potential have to face and my, my partner and brother in, in, in Kaiji Mudo, but it is going to be worth it when it, when, uh, you know, when he wins that Ricky Dozer Memorial Cup. And beating Hiroshi Ase in a, in a hard-fought match in 99, though, and then the shitstorm happens. But what a match for uh, Kaiji Mudo and Ultimo Dragon. The moonsault in 31 minutes, exactly how we wanted it. You know, Vader interfering and uh, getting payment because of that with that All-Asia Heavyweight title and just, uh, yeah. And it ruled in 82. A new world order is here. Set the record straight for New Japan. Because I wanted it to use the word new, you know, with the stable to kind of harken back to New Japan, you know, as far as from that perspective. And uh, it, just, it just was perfect, right? It just kind of the stars aligned when you think about it and just like, yeah, let's have it be the New World Order. Why not, right? So yeah, Kaiji Mudo and Masahiro Chono, Big Van Vader, Mike Awesome. Solid fearsome. Fearsome foursome, if you will. But uh, we'll see if there's going to be any more. You know, they, Kaiji Mudo has open invitation. If you're in all Japan, if you're in New Japan, you want to join the cause. They're they're open for it. And then Baba's fall out. So that's a fucking disgrace. And he vacates the belt too. Love it. Love it. You know, as far as that's exactly what we wanted. Everything goes well there. And yeah, just uh, couldn't ask for anything more. So we'll take a look at the uh, the card for the final show. As we do have it set. As a boy, I, I can't I, I can't believe we only got a 98 though to be honest because we had three 99s. <laughs> it is what it is, I, I guess. But yeah, it's crazy. Talway's match was a 99 too. I didn't think that was gonna happen. I figured uh, Hase and, and Hashimoto was, but I, I really didn't think that was gonna happen. But yeah, of course you guys know the finals. You guys know the junior heavyweight title matchup with Sasuke and Fuchi. You guys know of the junior tag team title matchup as well, with the Blonde Bombers of Candido and Jericho against El Samurai and Jushin Liger. But there's also going to be the New World Order, teaming up for the first time, as it will be the New World Order of, uh, as far as... Or no, I believe they're not on... No, no, I'm thinking about it. I don't think they are. No, they are. Okay, yeah, it's them against the Super Generation Army as well. So that's going to be... Obviously, you know, Chono. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, Kaiji Muto, Chono, Vader, Mike Awesome against Super Generation Army in an eight man tag. Fighting World Choshu versus British Combat Club, since we're doing, uh, that's a six man tag there. As, uh, you know, we obviously you know, are doing British Combat Club, Hase, Kensuke, Sasaki at the October Giant Series, so that's why that's happening. A six man tag, though, for Tenkoji and Yuji Nagata against the Miracle Violence Alliance. You love to see it. As, uh, you know, it's nice that Taz and Terry Gordy get to be on the show, but also you know, great opportunity for Doc to really carry these guys and Tenkoji and Yuji Nagata like he did last time. Scott Norton and Big Titan against the Headhunters in an undercard matchup. Just, you know, wanted to see if Scott Norton and Big Titan could work well as a team here. Then Golden King, the debut of Silver King. He's gotten his, <laughs> just one of the best bits of wrestling as far as with Jericho at uh, Slamboree uh, 98. Just like, you get 10 more wins, they'll be upgraded to Golden King. We're going to have a debut as Golden King, though. Uh, we're using, uh, as far as the gimmick, kind of like when you use a Nacho Libre, funny enough, like that gold mask, that kind of gold, traditional kind of luchador mask, and him and Super Astro. You know, I thought about the, the uh, with the Golden Kings of the Cosmos or something like that for him and for him and Astro. But just, uh, you know, as far as, because I think having a, a six-man with, as far as Ultimo Dragon... Super Astro, then Golden King. I think that, that, that's going to work out because you can do the uh, ultimate golden... Uh, the super ultimate golden kings, <laughs> if you will, for their trio name. But, uh, yeah. They're, they're taking on the tactical technician squad of Minoru Tanaka and Shofunaki as well. So, I think it's going to be a pretty fun card, honestly. As, uh, yeah, I think that's a solid, solid card. Only two title matches. Obviously, you have the main event. Winner takes on... Kaiji Mudo in the, uh, at the October Giant Series. So is it going to be Hashimoto versus Kaiji Mudo or will it be Taue versus Kaiji Mudo? We will find out here shortly. Alrighty. It is a moment of truth. 
who's going to win Ricky Dozer Memorial Cup. We will find out very shortly. It's crazy. I think a year ago, Doc had slayed the Great Muda. The first time someone had ever beaten Muda as, obviously, the Great Muda. But that's just, uh, it's crazy to think. It's crazy to think how far we've come as far as from a story now. And, and just, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. Super cool to see. Yeah, that was, a. Uh, it's crazy. British Combat Club, you know, they... That's when they won the All-Asia Tag Team title. So they might potentially lose it here against Hiroshi Ase and Kinsuke Sasaki. Well, actually not here, but at the October Giant Series, rather. we got to start with the main event. Tawei and Hashimoto. Kira Tawei has punched his ticket. Wins the Ricky Dozen Memorial Cup. I think it, uh, as far as the swerve. So I think a lot of people here are going to be like, All right, obviously Hashimoto's, you know, winning, and that's the story. But we don't want to give them the story yet. We don't. We don't want to. We got to build to it. But this is a great chance for Tawei. Tawei might be the fucking savior for UJPW. It's a big opportunity for him, and I think, you know, as far as you're going to see over that Giant Series tour, the story that's going to be told throughout that tour, just kind of like it, it's now become. Not just, uh, you know, NWO versus, you know, as far as it, you know, taking on anybody and everybody. But you're going to see, potentially, guys that have been battling and having rivalries for the past five years looking around and going like, oh, God, we got to team up. You know, as far as they're, they're getting too big. <laughs> they're getting too strong. But yeah, that's how he gets the win. Major win now. And uh, as far as I think this is the right call. As well, you know, just as far as... I think he's going to outperform Hashimoto. I know it's going to be close. But I think he can. I want to say... They had a match... Yeah, it was the Champion Carnival last year. Hashimoto won of the 87. So he gets that win back. Does Kira Taue. As for, yeah, then the co-main junior heavyweight title matchup. Maso Nobu Fuchi versus the Great Sasuke. As the Great Sasuke will retain it. So that will set... In motion, Great Sasuke versus Ultimo Dragon for the October Giant Series. Then the New World Order. Kaijimuda, Mazio Chano, Big Van Vader, and Mike Awesome. Taking on the Super Generation Army. Kaijimuda is going to win, beating Jun Akiyama. So we're kind of teasing, you know, potentially. It's like, oh, is Chono and is it going to be Chono and Vader? Is it going to be Vader and Awesome against Masao and Kobashi? You know, as far as we're teasing that. That story there, but I think that should be a fun match. It will be interesting to see how that does as far as ratings wise. Blonde Bombers for Zell Samurai and Jushin Liger. Zell Samurai is going to be Chris Jericho in 24 minutes. The Fighting World of Choshu. It's the British Combat Club. As the Fighting World of Choshu gets the win. Six man tag win for the uh, Fighting World of Choshu. They had a match at Best of Virginia Finals. It was a 92, so it should be about the same there. But Hase is going to beat Regal as well. Tough break for Regal in the past couple of days. Then uh, Tenkoji versus the Miracle Violence Alliance with, you know, obviously Eugene Nagata. And Nagata's going to beat Taz. So that's a great win. First of all, this match took place at the Summer Action Series Tour, which was in 74. When we did it then, we'll see how it does now. So I think it should go over pretty well, actually. I have a lot of faith in it. Scott Norton Big Titan against the Head Hunters. Tough break for Scott Norton Big Titan here. They're just head hunters, I just know they're gonna do better, so that's why that is. And then the, the golden, yeah, the golden cosmic uh, kings, if you will, or the super golden <laughs> cosmic kings, if you really want to have a mouthful against uh, the tactical technician squad. Is super Ash was gonna get the win? I don't know how Silver King's gonna do, but just better that way. They just kind of test it out. But that's not the only thing happening on this show. It's after. The New World Order beat the Super Generation Army. They're on the ramp. You know, got the, uh, as far as holding the, uh, their arms up high. Ten Koji with Yuji Nagata. Kind of got their arms crossed behind them. Waiting for them to turn around. They turn around. And, you know, as far as they don't know what's going to happen. Is Ten Koji and, and Yuji Nagata, they're going to put the fight to, no to the New World Order. Is that is that's what's going on? And then Big Embrace... As far as, uh, you know, Kojima and, uh, we can just say Tenkoji and Yuji Nagata, they embrace. As far as Vader and Mike Awesome and Chono and Kaiji Mudo. Looks like 
They're getting bigger already. From four to seven. Yuji Nagata. And, and as far as you know, Ten Koji, we uh I I think it's 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 definitely the right call. And you know, you know we're gonna have a little post show promo as well from uh as far as I don't know why I can't see there we go, Hiroshi Denbok. It's like I was trying to do too many things at once there. I was like everything's fucking up. Yuji Nagata. My God, Vader. Oh, yeah, big fan, Vader. Hey, and then Masir Chono. Okay, she moved over. So we can see an ankle. The New World Order gets bigger. I think that's the right call, though. It, it, you get a little bit on the younger side. You do get the you know story as far as from New Japan guys, New Japan Young Lions. They came into this company very very young, and they feel they were not given the opportunities that they deserved. So it should be fun. It should be fun to uh, yeah. We'll just go star quality on everybody. I guess that's the best way to go about it because it's kind of more of a visual thing. It's not really like yes, you can maybe say acting, but eh, you know, star quality works for me. Get your bigger for me. So yeah, the post show press conference basically, you know, what I just said as far as Kaiji Muto putting over Ten Koji and Yuji Nagata's guys that he has seen grow up in front of his very eyes and they had so much promise and potential in New Japan and when the companies combined, somehow they get thrown to the wayside, even though they are superior talents to some of the guys that, you know, all Japan has and says, you know, they're not they're not taking it anymore. Not, they're just going to sit there and do what Baba tells them to do. They're going to go out there and make their own opportunities. Thanks to the New, to the new World Order. So, uh, just, you know, putting over the new guys, but also, I think, giving them a chance of why they are joining the stable and why it makes sense for them for them to, uh, I wouldn't say jump ship, but like being the first guys to make the big jump. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. Also, as well, and that's kind of what we're going with as far as we're, we're not going with the obvious sometimes. And also, Kaiju Bido takes the you know, shit out of uh, Shinya Shimano just being just laughing, just being like, you know, he threw, look what he threw away. You know, as far as if he doesn't even want to be in the New World Order, if he doesn't join the tournament, you know, he might be joining beside us, sitting here beside us, you know, as far as having the chance to dominate New Japan and, and strangle, um, have a stranglehold in the company. Instead, he's a big, fat loser. <laughs> as far as for Kaiju Muto to say that. But, yeah, you know, as far as they're just being cocky pricks now already. Are looking to put a stranglehold UJPW. But, yeah, just, uh, just a fun little we're really giving Kaiju Muto all the promo time in the world. In the world, we're like, listen, we've already strapped the rocket to Kaiju Muto. Obviously, as him being the heavyweight champion for a good solid year now, almost a, a solid year, uh, you know, as far as in, in winning the champion carnival and all that jazz. But now to really let him have all the promo time in the world and really hammer it home, it's gonna be pretty exciting to see what he does with it. But yeah, the card, we are good to go. Let's run it. Fuck yeah, man. We are just so lucky sometimes, and it happens here with the uh, Cosmic Kings of uh, Golden King and Super Astro beating the Tactical Technician Squad as Super Astro pinning Minoru Tanaka with the Astro Scissors. Love it. Golden King with a 66, so yeah. I mean, not not bad for a debut. Not bad at all. Uh, but yeah, definitely not at the same level as, you know, obviously Minoru Tanaka and Shinichi Funaki, but that's why Super Astro's there. Great win, though. Great, great little opener. The Headhunters beating Big Titan and Scott Norton. Diving leg drop from Headhunter B in 19 minutes. An 80 for 10 Koji. And Satoshi Kojima, the last time we see kind of the the cute, uh, oh, well, maybe not cute, but the uh, the little New Japan kids all grown up, you know, as far as, in their, their, you know, as far as fighting spirit and all that fun jazz, trying to, you know, being the babyface good guys, if you will. Gone, gone goes that, as uh, now in the uh, joining the poison of the New World Order. But yeah, uh, you know, as far as Doc, again, killing it in this match. I figured he would. I was hoping it'd be a little bit better, but we'll take it. You just got it, though, with the uh, belly of the back suplex. 
Taz actually is uh, doing pretty well there. So that's, that's fascinating. But yeah, uh, Eugene the Gaiman and Tenzan in the 70s is nice to see. 891 for Fighting World Choshu in the British Combat Club is Hase pinning Regal at the Northern Lights Suplex. Yeah, Joshu's the shits. Everybody else did really well, though, obviously, doing a lot of the heavy lifting. 93 for the Junior Tag Team Battle matchup. This was actually a really good match. I was not surprised, or I was very surprised, rather, at how good this match went. As Candido and Jericho, 80s and 70s there. Tal Ceremony then 83 and 92 for Liger. As a Liger's head and shoulders above everyone else, as Jericho as the weak link and struggling to keep everyone else, keeping up with everyone else, his in-ring performance. So 97 for the New World Order against the Super Generation Army, the 8-Man Tag, Aishimuto with the Moonsault. Yeah! You yeah, know, as far as it's it's full steam ahead. Full steam ahead for Kaijimuto, Masu Chono, Mike Awesome and Vader, and now to add into the fold the New World Order, you know, as far as getting bigger already from four to seven, just like that. Awesome. Sucks that it was a sixty nine though. I wanted that to not really be a part of the show, but it is what it is. And it kinda kills the show now, because there's an eighty two for the great Sasuke and Masu for Chi, and Sasuke with a uh, Thunder Fire Firebomb gets the win in 2706. Yeah, just, it sucks that that was an 82. No business being that low. Sasuke making his fifth defense, though. You love to see that, as he is still the Unified World Junior Heavyweight Champion. But he tags on Ultima Dragon at the October Giant Series. And our main event, the 98th, the Dynamic Bomb for Akira Taue, beating Shinya Shimoto in the, yeah, as far as having Kawada in Taui's corner watching the match and as far as celebrating with him and just Hashimoto all alone. Just the uh, the subtle story, uh, just from the cinema cinematography there, as far as from what this guy went into and what he, you know, as far as risked it all. You know, as far as threw away his friendship, threw away his brotherhood with, and I just now realized we didn't pick the Tokyo Dome, so that's in front of 80,000 people, just in the parking lot somewhere. But yeah, uh, you know, I think that was a great finals. I think that was, a, 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 you know, somehow we still have a good show with it being a 96. It's weird, that was kind of like the weakest of shows out of the four, which is kind of funny, because of that angle, uh, mainly. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, that was exactly what I wanted. New World Order, they're here, they're big, and they're bad. And they're looking to take out UJPW from the inside out. Love it. Just, I think, the story, it's its there. It's simple. You have, not really a foreign invader, but, like, the foreigners that are tired of the bullshit type of thing. As far as, because it's not really invaders, because they've now been here. There is a Vader, <laughs> but there's not a, they're not invaders. You know, they've been a part of the company now. For a couple of years and just kind of taking matters in their own hands. So it's a different take, obviously, on the New World Order. And obviously, you know, it's much different than what <laughs> the real one is. So that's why I was kind of cool with taking that name. And obviously, you know, we talked about already how Bischoff took the idea. Obviously, didn't take the name, but took the idea of having a uh, opposing faction from another company. And as far as having a, a, a war, if you will, between... You know, Company A and Company B. That's looks like that's where we're going. With the New World Order being one group and then UJPW being the other one. So it should be fascinating to see how it all plays out. We know Taui's going to take on Kaijimuto. Maybe Taui can be the savior before really the war really kicks off. Because that'd be a major blow. Or will he be a casualty of the war? <laughs> will Kaiji Mudo get the win and uh, keep the, the rain going? We shall see in the next episode. So thank you all for watching. I know this was a short episode, but man, what an impactful one. You definitely don't want to miss this episode as uh, this was major. I can only imagine if you miss this one and you go into the next episode and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> You'd probably be so confused. But yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think it's a fun story. It's a fun story for sure. And uh, we'll see how it's, uh, how, you know, we're at the starting point. We're at the beginning stages of it, so it's exciting. It's always nice to see something new and fresh, and it's definitely something different to what we've been doing, as well as, you know, and we're doing a lot of angle-heavy stuff, too, which is something different. And it was something that I really wanted to do with this series to kind of at least make it different now, you know, because we're five years in, you know, and we have our formula. We know what works. We know, you know, as far as keeping it as far as traditional 
Japanese Pro Wrestling, also traditional King's Road Japanese Pro Wrestling, too. So there's not a whole lot of angles, not a whole lot going on. And now we're seeing fuck finishes. We're seeing guys turning on each other. We're seeing stories being done. You know, we're using our press conferences now. We're, we're really telling a story now outside the ring, as far as inside the ring, too. So that's nice to see. But uh, it's it just, it's, it's different. And that's sometimes you have to change it up, for sure. And that's what we're doing with this episode. It's a major shakeup. And we'll see the fall, uh, not the fallout, but the beginning stages in the next episode. Thank you again, and we'll catch you guys next time.